we'll continue with the next lab and uh, we'll uh, do the following. So in this case, um, we'll start the apps. So you don't have to download anything uh, 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 more, any new. Just have to start the webs to synchronize the webs with your application. Then to go, I think it's a fifth or sixth page. Fifth page, I think it's a AI data lock. So there is a menu, so you can also press uh, on it and then select AI data lock. Then you will have to select the audio because what we want to do is to add additional uh, audio uh, sample. Once it's done, you will have to add a label, because here what we want to do is to add a sample and we want to label it since the beginning. So we will have to add a label or select us if you already have created one. Then put a name, so in this case indoor, outdoor, you can use your own name, I mean just for, for today, because uh, what we want to show you is the principle, how the tools is running in this case. And then you have to select it once it's have been created, so indoors, and then start to log. And don't forget to stop to log, because as I say before, we just have one megabyte uh, memory, so that means after one minute, we'll be over. So it will be full. So if something is not running, what you can do, because it's depending what you did you know, before, you can press the reset, in this case it's better, and then start this principle. We are at the capture stage, and we will try to capture and label information using the tools. Okay, once it's done, and if you have no issues, so it, the, the, the things is recorded on the, on the Quad SPI. So I know the goal is to drag or to capture this wave and this Excel file, and therefore you will need a second cable. And this is, uh, it will use the USB on the go stuff, so please plug, first plug the USB on the go on your PC. And then at the prompt, you will have to put this commando. So USB space start. The goal of this is to mount the USB storage. So you have a, another storage on your PC and then you will be able to have a look on the Quad SPI directly. So once you have record one, two, three samples, then you can plug the cable. And once it's done, you should have a, a drive, additional one. And inside the drive, you should at least have a wave for the sound and a C, uh, CSV file, which is Excel file, including the label. So that means putting the link between the label and the sample, sample you have done. Let's go through model creation using Keras part. So this part of the activity covers uh, six steps. Please do not mix those six particular steps with the five step, five generic steps of mentioned in previous part. So those six steps are related only to the model creation in Keras. So what should we do? We should gather the data, collect the data to build the learning data set. And today we'll build the model of audio stream classification neural network. Uh, so to do that, we'll use public data set. So having the raw audio learning data set, we need to prepare the data. We need to do some digital signal processing. I will explain later on the details. But in general, we need to frame the audio signal. Then the second step of pre-processing, it will be logmal spectrogram. I will also explain the details later on. Then having the ready dataset, learning dataset, we'll be able to build the model. So uh, this is the fourth step, to build the model uh, in Keras li library. Uh, the fifth step is to train the model, so the core activity, in fact, of this part. And then evaluate the model by evaluation, I mean the testing of the model accuracy against new unknown data, so-called test data set. We are building audio stream class classification application. So as an input, we have time domain signal. We have just raw audio signal. 
what can we do? We can transform the time domain signal into frequency domain signal. It means, the frequency domain means that we will build the spectrograms based on the input time domain row audio signal. Uh, what is the spectrogram? Spectrogram is uh, just a picture. So what is the conclusion? We can use the well-known structure of neural network for the picture recognition. It is convolutional neural network to recognize the audio scene. Why? Because we have transformed the audio, the time domain signal to the picture, to the frequency domain signal. So this is our signal transformation flow, time domain, frequency domain, then a picture as a input data for the neural network, convolutional neural network, and then three classes to be classified, indoor, outdoor, and in vehicle. What about the learning data set? We will use, as I said before, we will use the public data set. It is data set collected by Helsinki University. It is 20 gigabytes of, of raw data composed of uh, 30 seconds long, let's say, atomic recordings. And they have recorded bigger number of audio scenes, acoustic scenes. Uh, they recorded 15 scenes. We need to have in mind that our micro is limited in terms of computational power. So we decided to decrease the number of acoustic scenes down to three classes, indoor, outdoor, in vehicle. And we also decide to decrease the sampling rate from 44.1 kHz down to 16 kHz, decrease the mode of recording from stereo to mono, and decrease the accuracy of the recordings uh, from 30 24 bits integers to single precision floating point. Okay, our tool to build the model, it is the Python source code. The Python it's a basic stuff in this case. And I have a general remark. Now, please do not analyze line by line the Python code. It, it doesn't make sense. You can do it later on. My goal, my idea is to show you the, the flow of the development chain. So uh, as a first stop, as a first step to, to build the learning data set, we are downloading the raw audio data set from the public location here. We are doing it using Python code. As the output, as the result of this download process, we have 1170 30 seconds long segments as a development samples, and we have 390 30 seconds long segments of the evaluation samples. A lot of data. Okay, the data preparation. What should we do now? To perform the data preparation, at least the basic, what I would say, the medium data signal processing knowledge is needed. This practice, the, the framing of the signal is well known to the DSP experts. So the first step of the data preparation is to frame the signal. So we need to slice the 30 seconds long atomic recording into overlapping 64 milliseconds long frames. This is the basic frame here the yellow one, 30 is 64 milliseconds long. Why 64 milliseconds long? It was the arbitrary decision of the DSP expert based on his experience. And here is the second overlapping window. The overlapping ratio is 50%. So the half of the frame overlaps the previous frame. Maybe I will show you the numbers. As you can see here, we have 30 seconds long atomic recording and we decide to slice this atomic recording into frames 64 milliseconds long. So 30 seconds divided by 0 0.064 second it is 468. Let's take the integer part of the result only. So we have 468 64 milliseconds long frames, but but the frames overlaps with the ratio of uh, 50 percent. So we need to multiply uh, 
this integer part by 2 because of 50% of overlap ratio. So 468, 468 multiplied by 2, it is as a final result 936 frames. Each frame consists of 1024 ADC samples. Just to remind you, our sampling frequency is 16 kHz. Okay. Goal of the overlapping is to avoid the boundary discontinuity during FFT transformation. So this is another more detailed explanation of the framing. Here we have 32 64 milliseconds long samples. What does it mean? As you know from the previous slide, the frame length though, is 64 milliseconds and the overlap ratio is, is 50%. So we have 64 milliseconds divided by 2. The stride is 32 milliseconds long. And again, because of arbitrary decision of the TSP expert, we decide to slice the 30 seconds long atomic recording into one second long parts. So one second is the equivalent of the one picture. Why one second? Because, because we have 32 frames, so the stride time is 0 0.032 multiplied by 32, it is 1 second point 0 0.024, so here we have time and the frequency, so this is the spectrogram of 1 second long audio recording, in fact to be more precise 1 second point 0 0.024, so the x-axis it is a time, y-axis it is the it is the frequency and the color of this FFT spectrogram corresponds to the magnitude of the audio signal. So this is the framing and uh, as a result we can perform FFT. This picture has one disadvantage. The useful signal is only present on the small area of the picture. So let's consider, let's think, how to magnify this area, which for sure increase the accuracy of the neural network in terms of the picture recognition. So just to remind you, we are building audio scene classification and we want to mimic the human perception of the audio scene classification. This is the goal. So we need to implement all the human audition system mechanism, biological mechanism. Our perception of the magnitude of the signal, of the audio signal, is logarithmic. But also the reception, our human reception of the, of the pitch of the signal is logarithmic. So we are much better in uh, differentiation between the frequency difference of the lower frequency than between the difference of uh, higher frequency. This chart shows this feature. The equation has been developed by scientists uh, in the laboratory, so this equation is taken from the practice, and this is kind of mathematical approximation of the phenomenon. And here you can see, let's take the frequency difference between 300 Hz and 500 Hz. So our perception of this difference is much better than the perception of the, the same, in fact, uh, difference 200 Hz between 3.2 kHz and 3.4 kHz. And we can reuse this relation, this chart, as a kind of magnifier glass to magnify this area on the picture. We can approximate the curve, but by set of filters, triangle sh shape, and we so-called the set of filters, the male filter bank. So one filter 
here, the second filter here, etc. Just to approximate this curve. So again, we have raw signal. Then we are framing the signal to perform the good quality uh, FFT to avoid the frames bond boundary discontinuity problems. Then we have male filter bank taken to approximate the logarithmic characteristic of the pitch perception. Then we can present the result in logarithmic scale. And as a result, we have quite nice picture. So this is the this picture corresponds to this area and consists of much more useful information than the row FFT. So uh, as a result, we have set of 1.024 second long pictures, and this is the Python code to prepare those pictures. So just to remind you, we have a set of recordings. 30 seconds long atomic recordings and each of the 30 second long raw audio recording is transformed to the frequency domain and as a result of this transformation we have 29 pictures. So the 30 seconds long atomic recording is represented as 29 spectrograms. Why 29? Each spectrogram covers 1.024 second long recording. So we need to divide the atomic recording, 30 seconds long, by 1.024. So as a result, we have 29. Of, of course, we need to take only the integer part. So we have 29 pictures. And as final result of this preprocessing code, we have 33k, almost 34k pictures of the 30 to 32 pixels resolutions. Okay, the next step is uh, after the preparation of the input of the learning data set is quite technical because the picture it is the input to our neural network. But we know what this picture represents. For example, this picture, this particular picture, represents the outdoor audio scene. So this is our grand true data. Let's say picture number N represents the class number M. We have three classes starting and we can uh, assign to each class the, the number starting from zero. So let's say zero means indoor, one means outdoor, two means in vehicle. And because we have a lot of pictures, let's consider the development data set 34K of pictures. This is our input data and we have output data, expected result of the neural network run. So this is the vector. So we have 34k items vector long. And the technical, because Keras expects us to provide the binary matrix instead of a vector, we need to transform the vector to the matrix. So this is technical operation. The next technical step is to standardization. This is the mathematical operation. The goal is to remove the mean and scale the input data variance to the to the unit variance. Why? Because we want to avoid the saturation during MCU data processing. So the standardizing of the data. Okay, this slide is important to catch the generic idea of the neural network and the learning data set. So to learn the neural network, we need a data set. But as you have seen, for example, on this slide, we have two data sets, development data set, and uh, this data set is bigger, and the evaluation data set or test data set, and this data set size is lower than the development data set. And what is behind? So the general learning data set, the development data set as a subset one, evaluation data set as a subset number two. So the development data set, taking the school example, 
is the material for the lecture. So we have the lecture and after the, let's say, the school period, we have the kind of validation test. But what is the main feature of this period test? That the material is known. Because the teacher said to the pupils that during the test we will go through the already learned material. The evaluation data, the subset number two, is used for testing the neural network. And the main feature of the evaluation data set is that this evaluation data set has not been presented to the neural network during the development, during the learning. So the evaluation data set, it is the equivalent of the, the final study exam, final university exam. So the, the questions are or should be not known to the pupil during the final exam. This subset is uh, split into two parts, the test data itself and the partial test. The, the size of partial test is much lower than the, than the final test because of practical reasons. For example, let's consider the test of the microcontroller, of the neural network running on the top of the microcontroller and uh, virtual COM port as a channel to provide input data to, to the neural network. The, the virtual COM port, over the, of course, over the USB channel, the band of the USB is limited. It would be not so much practical to send gigabytes of data using USB. That's why we can define the partial test, let's say few megabytes, several megabytes, and use USB to test the neural network. Okay, it was general explanation and uh, this slide shows the Python code which splits the data set into development and test and validation and partial test data sets. So for the training, for the development data set, we have 25k of pictures. For the validation, so just to remind you, the validation means the end of the school period exam. It is uh, about 80k pictures. The final school exam, the validation of the neural net, uh, the, the evaluation of the neural network data set consists of uh, 11k of pictures and the partial data test uh, sample consists of one, 114 pictures because we will use USB as a communication channel and just to, because of practical reason, we need to limit the amount of data. And what is very nice for Python and Keras, this quite complex operation is done using only one line of source code here. So, now we have the pre-processing of data, we prepare the development and evaluation data sets, and now it's time to the, I would say, core activity to build the neural network model. Because, in fact, we are recognizing pictures, we will use well-known the structure of the neural network for the picture recognition. It is convolutional neural network, and again, you can see the big advantage of, of the Keras library because we need to use only one line to build or to define each layer of the neural network. As a first line, we, we are defining the type of the model. It will be sequential. It means that we are defining layer by layer of the neural network. So first layer is a convolutional 2D layer. The second layer is a max pooling. Again, convolutional to the max pooling. Then we need to flatten the data to fit the uh, dense layer. And next point is the definition of the dense layer of the brain of our neural network. And the output layer consists of three elements because we have three classes, indoor, outdoor, and in vehicle. This is different representation of the graphical representation of the neural network. This is uh, another representation of the same neural network. Mm. This is the representation of the neural network generated by Python script. And here is a basic explanation of convolution layer. Convolution layer is a just kind of digital filter. Very basic one, as you can see on this picture. So let's consider 
to the input for the neural network to the the, 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 the to the matrix uh, with the numbers and for the convolution filter we need to define the window of kernel size in our case kernel size 2 by 2 and stride value or step moving filter step value so in our case stride value is one by one so we are moving one field each direction of the matrix and what is the operation behind let's consider this green area we need to take the input value multiplied by the weight of the corresponding ne neuron input so 8 multiplied by 0 0.5 10 multiplied by 0 0.1 3 multiplied by 0 0.2 15 multiplied by 0 0.8 then sum accumulate all the values and as a result we have 17.6 here is another representation this is i would say analog representation of the operation here's a more digital representation just to simplify the picture i assume that uh, all the weights are the same and equal to 0 0.5 so as a result we decrease the amount of data this is in fact the main goal, the main feature of the convolution uh, layer filter to decrease the amount of data. The max pooling layer, the explanation is, the, is similar, the idea is even more simple. So we, again we have moving window of stride value and we need to just find the maximum value within the moving window. So for example, for this window we have 15, for the magenta one we have uh, 9, for the green one we have, we have 8. And again, the amount of data is decreased. And for example, this filter is very good to, to detect the edges of some shape. And the fully connected layer, the dense layer here, it is the brain of the neural network. Okay, the training process. So having the learning data set, having the neural network structure, we can start the training process. And again, this is only the one line using Keras and Python. Before, we need to select the optimizer and uh, compile the model. As a result, we are getting the, the loss function. So I think uh, I should explain the loss function, which uh, shows us the, the quality, the learning process. Of course, the lower losses, the, 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 the better result of the, of the neural network learning process. We need to back uh, to the school, at least for a minute. And the basic idea behind the loss function, it is a gradient. What is a gradient? gradient points to the direction of the fastest function increase. So using the gradient we can find the maximum of the function. But just to be more clear, gradient doesn't point to the maximum of the function, gradient points the direction to the maximum of the function. So let's consider the very simple free variables function like here. And the gradient of this function it is a set of the unit derivatives of the function. So df by dx, df by dy, df by dz. Let's evaluate the partial derivatives. So df by dx of 2 multiplied by x, it is 2. df by dy, it is 2, 2y. df by dz, it is 3, z power of 2. And let's consider the starting point coordinates to find the maximum of the function. Let's assume that we start from the coordinates x, y, x uh, equal 1, y equal 2, z equal 3. So this is our starting point in the 3D space. So we can plug into our current, uh, plug in current coordinates into the gradient. So we plug the, the current coordinates into the gradient you can see here and evaluate the point the another point in the space 2 4 27 so the maximum of the function starting from this point in the space for this space is in this direction 
so we need to draw the line between the starting point and the end point and this is the direction again to rem uh, just to highlight this is not the point of the maximum of the function this is the direction of the maximum of the function and now the really basic question is how long should we go in this direction to find the maximum of the function we can go the small step and then evaluate the next direction using the gradient again we can go the medium step and evaluate the, the gradient the direction again we can go the big step and evaluate the direction why it is so important because we can just overlook the maximum of the function so it was the gradient explanation and now let's come back to the loss function so what is loss function loss function maps the values of one or more variables in our case it will be neural network weights and biases so really a lot of variables sometimes billions of variables onto a real number one real number which represents some cost associated with those values and our goal is to minimize the loss function so on the previous slide we have discussed the very simple function of three variables in our case we have function neural network weights and biases it could be even billions of variables so the really demanding in terms of the computation power okay so the gradient points the direction of the fastest function increase so can be used to find the maximum of the function what about the minimum of the function we need to use the negative of the gradient the gradient descent approach to find the minimum of the function so exactly negative approach of this basic rule so we should go not in this direction to find the maximum we should go to the opposite direction to find the minimum of the function and again the absolutely the basic question is about the step when trying to find the minimum of the function because if the step is too big for the big step of the gradient state it is possible that we will never converge for the small gradient descent step for sure we will, we will converge we will find the minimum but the time needed for the computation will be really huge like days or weeks okay how to evaluate the model how to build the metric of the model so the i would say most intuitive one metric is the accuracy and the accuracy represents the ratio between the what about uh, evaluation uh, of the model metrics the most basic one metrics is uh, just accuracy you can see here the the example 0 0.89 what does it mean it means that for 89 percent of inferences the result was proper so 11 percent of the queries to the neural network the for 11 percent of the queries to the neural network the result of the inference was bad the test loss uh, represents the error during the learning process the quality in fact the quality of the learning process and the lower test loss is the better quality of the neural network learning and in fact the better accuracy the test accuracy is quite a generic number it is kind of overview of uh, neural network behavior and we cannot see the class-wise errors but there is another matrix so-called confusion matrix and for uh, this matrix we can see the quality of the accuracy of the neural network class-wise so as you remember we have three classes to classify indoor outdoor and in vehicle and uh, the size of the matrix you can see here is three by three so because of the number of classes so here 
you can see that for class 0 it is the indoor class the neural network inference results is 0 0.99 it means that if the neural network was fed that the picture represents the indoor spectrogram for 99% of the cases the inference result was proper for 1% of the cases neural network mixed the indoor class with in vehicle class the same for the outdoor class so 98% proper inferences the neural network mixed the outdoor with indoor class for 1% and mixed in vehicle with outdoor class for 1% and for in vehicle for 100% the result was okay so this accuracy is here is a little bit different than the overall accuracy here because it is just a mean of the diagonal of the matrix here so it is 0 0.99 how the uh, how it is uh, done with uh, XQBI, the confusion matrix evaluation process. So uh, we have uh, custom data, for example in a CSV file. Then we fit the generated C model with those custom data. Then we have expected output, grant true. So we know what we should expect. And there is a dedicated Python script to evaluate process the confusion matrix. I mentioned here the CSV file. So it is a more technical slide showing that using Python code, we can generate all the data sets, both the input data set as output data set in CSV format using Python script. This is the presentation of the core of the ST offer in terms of AI. But first, we need to start from STM32 CubeMX. So, what is CubeMX? CubeMX it is a MCU configurator and generator of the application code of the application template. This tool lets you in very easy graphical way configure your M MCU, configure your project and generate C code which can be so-called template or framework of the, of the application. We have four main uh, components or ingredients of the CubeMX tool. Pin configurator, so you can easily configure uh, all the GPIOs of the MCU. It d this example is very simple. This is LQFP64, but we have much more, uh, much rich of pins uh, MCUs. Clock tree configurator. I think this is the one of the biggest advantage of the of the of the CubeMX. You will see how complex the the the, the clock tree of our controller, our L475 controller, is and what uh, and it it was really nightmare before the 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 cubemix re release to, to the, the configuration of the of the clock tree from 2 hours to 2 months depends of on the on the and now it is really pleasure then we can configure we, we can configure not only all the the gpios but we can configure all the peripherals like USART, uh, ADC, DAC, timers, etc. as well in graphical way. And then we can simulate the current consumption, the power consumption based on the co uh, already configured peripherals set and the particular clock frequency and the clock source. 
So that's all the uh, the basic functionalities uh, of the CubeMX. What is behind? Behind is a software library. Uh, and of course, hardware. So we have, we have uh, on the, uh, we, we need to start from the hardware, from the microcontrollers. Then we have uh, drivers. And it can be a hardware abstraction layer, so the, the, the high-level library, which covers all the, all the peripherals. Uh, and the biggest advantage of this hardware abstraction layer, I think there are two. Uh, the portability, you can very easily migrate between families, you, and this is automatic process. Using You can use CubeMX to migrate, for example, from uh, STM32L4 to STM32F4 or F7, whatever. Uh, of course, the, the simplicity of the coding, because we have hardware abstraction, so, so th there is a lot of functions to, which covers uh, all the peripherals and covers all the approaches like pooling, like interrupt mode, like DMA mode. Mm. Then we have board support packages because we have different boards like Nucleo boards, the most simple one, like discovery board, uh, like evaluation board. This is very useful, HAL level, HAL level examples. Personally, because uh, in my previous company, I, uh, I have no uh, use uh, ST. Uh, I have never used uh, the documentation of HAL library, the paper, the PDF documentation. It is very well documented inside the source code, inside the .c file. Uh, the, the, the header of each module, it is uh, just a quite nice documentation. How to start, how to, uh, what, what you sh sh uh, I should to do to start properly, particular peripheral, for example. And we have really huge set uh, of, the, of the examples uh, I call those examples atomic examples, peripheral wise. So, for example, I would like to know how to implement DMA transfer from the ADC on this and that microcontroller. I'm just opening the repository of, of HAL, of CubeMX, and then I'm looking for atomic example uh, for the DMA transfer from the ADC. That's all. Without digging inside the user manual, which is sometimes really huge, 2,000 uh, pages, uh, or almost 2,000, without digging inside the data sheet and application node, just, I definitely recommend you to take an atomic example of the peripheral implementation. Then we have higher level examples, and mm, uh, uh, based on the middleware. So there is an implementation of TCP IP basing on LWIP protocol stack, USB, host and device, uh, graphics. Uh, here is an old uh, slide because we have uh, uh, Stemwin and we have also, we just uh, uh, acquire TouchGFX from, from Denmark. This is part of ST now. Uh, like Atolic from Sweden. Uh, file system FATFS, so we are using uh, FATFS fi file system now. FreeRTOS, we are using FreeRTOS now. Mm, I mean our audio stream classification application. And then we have middle uh, middleware level applications. So examples how to use those middle layer, middle, uh, middleware layer. For example, implementation of the virtual COM port on particular microcontroller. And then on the top we have uh, <coughs> evaluation boards, as I mentioned, starting from Nucleo uh, through Discovery and uh, up to evaluation, uh, fu uh, full evaluation boards, the most expensive one with all the, all the features and external <coughs> components. 
Then we have some utilities like fonts, like uh, CMCs. CMCs is very important, of course. Okay, today uh, this is uh, w w we do not have focus on 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 Kubemix or Hal Hal libra library, uh, but again. Uh, you can use manual, but in practice there is no need to use manual for the HAL library because it is well documented inside the uh, uh, C code. And we have very good online training on YouTube. You can try. This is the most popular training inside, inside our organization, I mean the microcontrollers, part of ST, mm, and quite good. Please start Cubemix. I will do in parallel with you. And we will use today Cubemix version 5.3. And we will start from LED blinking, nothing new. Okay. So this is the, the, the main uh, user interface. Uh, we, have, we have board. It is discovery board, so-called IoT board. So we can, uh, so we need to start new project, of course, from access to board selector. We can start from the MCU, but let's speed up the things and start from uh, access to board selector by pressing. And if you would get some message uh, about connectivity, please uh, to the to the server, please skip it, just close it. And then we have the board selection. Uh, window and we can just enter IOT within the part number search bar. So just double click on the uh, board name and now again this is not our focus to, to the Cubic MX itself so please select initialize all peripherals. Yes. Okay now we can see the micro. We have uh, four tabs, pinout, configuration, clock configuration, project manager, and tools. Let's focus on the, on the pinout. We need to find a GPIO connected to the LED. And just remember the, the GPIO na name. So the first GPIO I can see is the LED2 connected to PB14 here. You can also enter here PB14 and it will start to blink. So we need to use the GPIO PB14, port GPIO B and GPIO 14. Okay, that's all. Then clock configuration. Uh, please do not touch. I just want to show you the, the, the complexity. And this is the the, the, the medium complexity of the clock tree. So the manual configuration is a nightmare. Uh, it is just, it is already pre-configured to the maximum clock 80 megahertz. That's all. Then project manager. We need to put project name Of course, you can put whatever you want. Then you need to select project location. I would propose this location, AI hands-on, because we will use True Studio, and True Studio sometimes uh, doesn't accept long paths. Okay. So the project name, project location, and then our tool chain. Today, we will use free tool. It is TrueStudio. 
And please keep generate under uh, root selected. That's all. When you finish, you can press generate code. And then, okay, I will do. Okay, so we can see the, the message pop-up window. So, now I would propose to select open project. And on my PC, because I'm a supporter, I have a lot of tools, a lot of IDEs. I have no proper assignment to the True Studio project, so I need to open folder. But you can select open project. In case of problems, you can select, you can follow my way. So I'm opening folder. Yes, the project is present. Then we can switch to the True Studio. Okay, so on my PC, I need to go to the file, open project from file system, then directory, then C AI, then handsome, then LED Blink Munich. Okay. We can unroll the project. So within the project inspector of True Studio, please unroll the, your project, Blinky project. Then go to the SRC folder and unroll, double click on main.c. And what's now? You can see a lot of sections with, uh, inside the comments. User code begin something. User code end something. So this is the code automatically generated by Cubemix and it is allowed to put the user code only inside the section. Maybe a lot, is it a lot? It is wrong description. I would suggest <laughs> to put the user code inside the section. Otherwise, during regeneration, the code will be deleted. So we need to put the code inside the section. And let's go to the section number, user code section number three. It is line number 123, as I remember well. Ah, uh, 20, 20, 28. Here. It is inside the main loop. <sighs> Be careful here, because we have two sections here. User code begin while and while. There is a forbidden space. And then user section number three. So the, 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 the most often uh, mistake of the green ones uh, with Cubemix is to put user code here. We know about this hint, so we will put the code here. So let's toggle the GPIO. Each function of the HAL library starts with the HAL header. Then there is the name of the resource of the peripheral, GPIO. Then there is an action. You can also use control space. I will show you again. HAL GPIO underscore toggle. We know that we need to toggle. And then we can press, we can keep control and then press space.
Do you remember the uh, the port? The port? Which port we need to use? GPIOB. So this is the first parameter. And the second parameter is the particular port, particular line of the port number. GPIO pin 14. That's all or not? We need to toggle LED inside the main loop. That's all, but, <laughs> but due to uh, our own neural network, we have a small latency. That's why we need delay. And this is the half function for delay. Uh, it, it is based on the cystic timer. Ah, sorry. Thank you. It is based on cystic timer and the resolution is in uh, is one millisecond. So I, I can put five millisecond, but of course the, the, the delay is up to you. And that's all. We can take a hammer and build the project. But before I will show you a hint how to speed up the building process. P please highlight the project name then right-click, Properties, and C, C++ Build. I will show you again. Highlight the project name, right-click, Properties, C, C++ Build, Behavior, Enable parallel build. And we will use all of the cores of our MPU. What is the problem with, with this setting? What could be the problem with this setting? Your IT administrator could kill you if you are compiling remotely because you can block the server d uh, for, the, for the building process, so be careful. But today we can use it. Apply. OK. And then take a hammer. It is built. You can see the, uh, I cannot see, because I have resolution problem, but the, the, the resources usage. Okay, so we have almost uh, four kilobits, four kilobytes of the, of the flash footprint. So this is the disadvantage of HAL. But the, the, the footprint size, but on the other side we have portability, we have very nice code to analyze. It is, uh, we have some rules from Misra C, so I know we have automotive experts, it's a well-known standard. Uh, and we can easily jump into the new micro. So we can save a lot of time. OK, so now we can download, we can flash our board. So please press the bug button here. And now probably all of you will get such a message. So we need to update the firmware of the Estelink debugger. So OK. Yes. And then device connect. Okay. So here you can see that the, the, the board is flashed. 
and you need to you need to see the the resume or, or play button active the green then you can just terminate the session and the led is blinking we can close this project just to keep things clear uh, so please highlight the project name within the project inspector then right click and then close project Okay, during this lab, we will migrate the neural network model, just trained neural network model, the output from the Python, Python script you have seen, .h5 file, we will migrate this model to the C code. Okay, so let's stay with Cubemix. We must start new project. And just to remind, 5.3 version. So access to board selector, or you can go here. File, new project, up to you. And then we need to enter IoT and double click on the part number and initialize all the peripherals. So we have our micro. And how do you think? What do we need to migrate the model? We need a model. Here is a hidden button. So please press additional software button. Then I propose to narrow the selection by selecting the artificial uh, intelligence only. Okay, so we can see the XCube AI expansion pack. Just to be more clear, we have STM32 CubeMX tool. This is the code generation. And we have HAL library, hardware abstraction library, to configure and to generate the source code for the initialization of microcontroller. And then we can extend the CubeMX features with external libraries, which is so-called expansion package. And one of the expansion package example is XCubeAI. We have expansion package for the MEMS, for the Bluetooth, etc. Now we are focusing on the expansion package. In fact, this is library or even more than library. This is repository with examples, library, uh, documentation, etc. Now we are extending the CubeMX with XCubeAI expansion package version 4.0.0. The current one is 4.1.0 but today we will use 4.0.0. And STM32 CubeMX extended with Xcube AI, it is cube.ai. Okay, let's unroll all the items. And we have two items to, to select, application and core. What is core? Core is our library, our neural network library. Just to remind you, it is object format, it is object library without debug capability. Okay, so core, uh, if we consider, I don't know, Bluetooth, mm, core, it is equivalent of protocol stack. But protocol stack, it is only a tool. We need to put the application layer on the top, on the protocol stack, on the core. So we need to select core to activate the neural network library, our implementation of neural network algorithms, and we need to put on the top particular application. It can be your application, we'll use the ready application. We can select between three different applications. System performance, so this is very simple application showing the accuracy, showing the, the, the speed of inference, showing the usage of heap and stack very important, because the debug capability is closed. So you can use system performance application, uh, for example, if you interact with FreeRTOS, because FreeRTOS is uh, using the controller heap, and it is important to control the, 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 the heap usage. But today, we will not use system performance. We will use validation application, because 
we want to validate the neural network running on the top on the real silicon with the original model running on the top of my strong processor. It means that we will get what kind of error? Relative error, not absolute error. Because we will be comparing the predictions of the fully equipped model with the full precision, with a lot of resources, uh, running on the PC with poor model on the top of microcontroller. We just want to evaluate, we just want to know what is a drop of the accuracy of the model migrated to silicon. And in order to do this, we can compare the runtime between the migrated model and the original model. And we will get relative error. Validation. The third application, this application template, it is your case, in fact. When you would like to use uh, Cubemix and you would like to start your custom application, you can select template uh, application. So it will generate the template to fulfill with, with your source code. Of course, including the, the neural network library. Okay, validation and core must be selected and the version 4.0.0. So the additional item just appear within the resources manager. Let's unroll it. And you can see that we have Xcube AI 4.0.0 item. So now we can configure this resource by clicking. Okay, so we activated uh, uh, core and application. And now we need to add model, add network. So please press to migrate. We need to add model to, mig to migrate. So please press add network. Then it would be nice to put our customer custom name to the network ASC. Audio steam or acoustic steam classification. And we have Keras model because I used Keras library. And we have one file containing the model, so please select saved model. We can split the, 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 the output from the learning process to topology of the neural network and the weights file. Quantized model, I will discuss it uh, at the end of the workshop. So saved model, ASC Keras saved model. Then let's select the model, browse. And please go to the C AI, so this is our repository, AI folder, Sensing One folder, Utilities, AI Resources, Models. And then please select the last one, Session Keras Mod 9.3 Model.h5. Please do not select this, uh, the, the first one. It is Quantized Model. Let's select the last one. So now we have a model to migrate. And the first step to perform is to analyze the model in front of our resources, in front of the resources of the selected MCU. Let's do it. Do this. Analyze. Okay. The pop-up window just appears. Let's close this window to, 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 to avoid confusing you with strange numbers. We will focus on the most important and most practical numbers. The th those three values, complexity, flash occupation, and RAM occupation. Complexity, 517K of something, MACC. MACC means multiply and accumulate complexity. This is the unit, the universal unit, universal metric to evaluate the complexity of the neural network model. And what is the relation to the clock cycles? There is no direct uh, relation, but 
but do not worry, we can say that one MACC, it is about, this is the keyword, about nine clock cycles for the Cortex M4 and seven clock cycles for the Cortex M7. You can find those numbers in the documentation. So you can easily calculate, you can easily evaluate the, the number of clock cycles for needed for one inference, for one prediction. The next value is wel well known to all of, all of us, flash occupation. This is quite small model, model, only 31 kilobytes. But on my PC I have model which uh, occupies about 3 megabytes of flash. And what should we do in such a case? Let's imagine that we, have we are standing in front of such a problem. Here we have 3 megabytes. What should we do? We should start with the original model without, uh, without touching the model with validation on the desktop to see the accuracy of the model. So please press the validate on the desktop button. And now we are running and we are comparing two models, two runtimes. First runtime, it is the original model taken from the Python and running on the top of the Python, Keras and TensorFlow with double uh, float precision. And on my four cores processor, this is our base to compare. And the second model migrated to C, which is running on the top of the C simulator here. C compiler and, and simulator. On the, on the, on that's why it is so-called validate on desktop. And as a result, we will get the relative error. And the result is here. L2R, it is the relative error between the original model and migrated to C model running on the simulator. And this is, the number is quite nice because this is about 8 in power of minus 8. When the border, the threshold is 0 0.01. So it is okay. But this number, this border, this threshold, has been selected in, again, it, this is arbitrary selection. This is selection of, of, of our development team. You can select lower border to be acceptable. Depends on application. Okay, let's press OK. I will explain you on the slide. Again, we have two models. The original Python Keras TensorFlow model on PC and the generated C model, the migrated C model. Then we, we can use two different data sets. We can use random data set if we don't have custom data set, or we can use custom data set if we have. So uh, alternative selection. Then we are feeding both models in the same time with the same data set we are evaluating the relative error. Previously, we discussed the confusion matrix. So we, we had custom data set and we were able to evaluate the absolute error because uh, when we have custom data set, we know what we can expect. And we can use the absolute error evaluation both for the uh, original model and for the migrated model. But relative model shows us what is the drop of the accuracy of the prediction of the inference after migration to C? Okay, but let's consider the big models. Let's, let's, let's imagine that here we have three megabytes. We just validated our model, it is okay. So the migrated model behavior is okay. The accuracy, is the dro the accuracy drop is acceptable, but we need to uh, decrease the resources usage. We can do, do this using compression here. Let's select the compression factor 4. And the compression means 
it is again quite complex algorithm. Uh, the compression, it is weight sharing inside the dense, dense layer. So we are not touching the, the, the convolution, we are not touching the, the, the max pooling layers. So our filtering, our feature extractors, we are touching only our brain, our dense layers. Okay, so after setting compression number uh, four, we can analyze again. So, we can observe now the dramatic reduction of the flash occupation, almost by 50%. The RAM occupation is, is, is almost the same, because we need the same data structures. Okay, the model is compressed, but we need to again check the accuracy drop, because we just checked the accuracy drop between original model and not compressed model, then uh, now we will check the accuracy drop between original model and compressed model migrated to C. So validate on desktop. Okay, and now the result is little bit worse because we have two in power of minus four. Previously we had 8 in power of minus 8. So, four orders of magnitude drop, but we are still far from the border, acceptable border of the relative error. So, it is okay. So, that's all regarding the network, the core, the library. Now, we need to configure the, the application layer. So, please go to the platform settings. And the application layer is very simple because we, we have only UR COM port, to exchange data with the PC. So let's select USART asynchronous and USART1. We need COM port to exchange data with the PC to be able to validate the neural network accuracy on the real silicon. We need to send the data to the neural network and send back the results of the inference. Project Manager tab. project name, then project location, c slash ai slash Hanson, and through studio as a ID, and we can generate code. Okay, so you can open project on your PC. I need to import the project. So again, switch to True Studio, then File, Open Project from File System, Directory, and Validate NN Munich. OK, and Finish. And then let's unroll the project and unroll a source src folder and double click on main.c then double click on the asc underscore data.c and double click on the asc.c this is the array which consists of the weights and biases so in fact all the neural network functionality is hidden behind those numbers. This is the frozen uh, array with the coefficients of the neural networks. So we can call it as a meta program because the functionality of the neural network is hidden behind those numbers. Okay, but let's go to the main.c. The AI process call, it is only one line inside the main loop here in main.c. MX X cube AI process, that's all. In ASC dot, uh, underscore data dot C, we have weights and biases. And this is ASC dot C. It is our programming interface. But to see the header files, please go to the, 
please open the ASC.C, then go to the line number 23, put cursor on the ASC.H and then press F3 to open ASC.H. And what we need to do to integrate the model, the, the simigrated model with our application. We need input data structure and here is the image resolution, the picture resolution. We need output data structure and here is the number of the classes to predict. We need to allocate the resources for the neural network, so AS, AI, ASC, create, then this is the complementary function to the create, then we need to init the data structures and run the inference, that's all. So input data structure, output data structure, allocation the resources, initialization of the data structures, and running the inference. That's all. Let's build the project. This is so please highlight the project name, then right click properties CC build behavior enable parallel build just to speed up the building process. Okay. Then you can take a hammer or you can just press the back icon and it is building. Please do not care about warnings because this is related to GCC compiler. And when board is flashed, so the play button or the resume button is, is active, we can terminate the session. And then we can open terminal. The parameters of, of the communication are 115 kilobits per second. Okay. And we need to press black button. And the action to perform is described here. At this point, we should close the terminal to free, to free the virtual COM port for the data exchange with the Cubemix. You can skip this step. And then let's come back to the Cubemix and our network or ASC or whatever uh, name you, you put. And now you, we can select, we can validate on target. So we can, now we will send data to the, to the neural network running on the real silicon and we will compare the prediction to the prediction of the original model. And we will again get a relative error. So let's select manual. Let's select the COM port, the ST-Link COM port the bold rate, it is OK, and then start the validation. So it is only 114 pictures to validate. Uh, and we can see the accuracy is almost the same, 1.9 in power of minus 4, like uh, during the uh, running the network on the top of the simulator, C simulator. So our neural network model running on the silicon is okay. This is the conclusion. So you can ask, okay, it is nice to validate the network, but how to update my application with the new model? We just need to exchange four files. We need to exchange the file containing the weights and biases and companion.h file, the companion header file, and we need to extend the programming interface, uh, so asc.c and companion.h file. So we need to be Windows Explorer experts, that's all. <laughs>